Hello YouTube, it's Andy again, and uh, in this uh, tutorial I'm going to show you how to get started with the, the Android wearables. Um, I'm, I'm starting it, I've already done it on one computer, so I'm going to do it from scratch on this computer. Kind of show you how to how to walk you through everything. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, since I'm, I use Android Studio from now on, uh, I'm going to update that. As you can see, I haven't updated this in a while. Uh, this isn't my primary build machine for all my current projects. This is just the one that I use for the YouTube videos. So uh, I don't update it every now and then. So this will be a good starting place actually for everybody else who's probably just now hearing about Android wearables like I did a few hours ago. So um, first update. So I'm going to let that go. Next you're going to want to go to uh, this website. I got the link from um, the Android police. Um, in the source, if you go down to the Android, the Google blog, you'll get the the link to here. Um, this uh, basically allows you to um, gives you all the information on 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 the Google Wear, and you can watch some YouTube videos on it and everything. Uh, next thing I did was go to the this website, which now Android Studio is updated, so that's good. So then you want to go to the get the developer preview. Now, you want to sign up for a developer preview. This is required for you to be able to get the app and uh, the um, uh, items which will be emailed to you. So what you want to do is um, sign up all, all this information here, hit submit, and then you'll get an email. I got an email pretty quickly within, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. But they do say they could take up to 24 hours for everything to be fully functional. For you to uh, download the app and everything from the from the store and and all that, but you have to sign up for a few things. So this is one. This is going to be the the developer preview of um, uh, of the the SDK and the, well, actually not the SDK. Sorry, this is going to be the jar file that you're going to need to import into your projects to use it. Um, you also need. Uh, sign up for the beta for the app which they will notify you in the email as well on how to sign up for that and then they'll also give you the link where to get the app from the play store so it won't show up for you if you're not signed up and uh, it will take you know i mean it showed up quick for me i i mean i tested it about 10 minutes later and it was able to, for me to download on my phone um, from what i've read it doesn't work with tablets i haven't tried it on my nexus 7 but um, I'm not even going to try until I see an update on my phone. Um, right now, uh, it, I think the minimum requirements for the phone is Android 4.3 or 4.4. So uh, I'm, I have a Note 2 that I'm using um, CM11 4.4 on, so I was able to, to download it on there. So once you signed up for all this stuff, you get links in your email. Um, Next, you want to go in. You want to actually set up the the, the uh, your SDK so that you can build a virtual machine. And then I'm also going to show you how to connect it once you have the app and all that stuff. So we're going to go to configure SDK manager. So in the SDK manager, you're gonna. I probably haven't updated this in a while. This needs to be 22.6. Point one, I believe. I think they said point six, but. You know, 22.6.1 is the current uh, version as of today, uh, the 18th, so March 18th. So I have a bunch of stuff I have to download. So, uh, yeah, um, there's a few things that are missing. Like, it'll show up here in the, uh, Android 4.4, actually, Android 4.4.2. So that's why I have a lot of stuff I need to download. Another thing you also need to download is the support repository and the support library. If you're going to be using uh, Android Studio, you def you need the repository. If you're using Eclipse, apparently that's not required. So uh, this is, I guess, something that is um, uh, Android Studio specific. So once you accept all the licenses, OK, good. So this is going to take a little bit. And while that's doing that, I'll talk about the app. So the app doesn't really do very much. It's just. Um, a link between your computer and the um, uh, sorry, the computer and the and the emulator. So what happens now without developing an app or anything? 
all of your notifications on your uh, phone will show up on the wearable. Um, but I'll show you that once we get around to being able to download the source. The, the, um, it's an ARM-based thing. It's not Intel. So that kind of gives us a hint as to what type of processors we'll be seeing inside the these wearable. It probably won't be an Intel x86. It'll definitely be an ARM, something low power, which makes a whole lot of sense. If you know, if you want something that's a wearable, you want it to last, you know, longer than your smartphone. I mean, it's got to be something that if you forget to charge it one day, that's no big deal, right? I mean, that would kind of make sense to me. So we're going to need something that's going to be ARM based. Uh, there's two options when you're setting it up. You can do the round interface or the square interface, which you see here. So here's the round interface. That's what it looks like. And then this down here is the square interface. Um, so I'll show you how to set up uh, those. It's pretty simple um, and straightforward. So, OK. Yeah. We're going to have to download another image. I haven't updated this in a while, so that's why it's taking quite a bit. Um, so once that's done, we're gonna have to relaunch it for the Android 4.4.2 stuff to show. So do you want to, yeah. So let's close this and relaunch it. And look, Android Wear ARM, uh, EABI version 7A system manager. And notice how this was updated to 4.4.2. So we'll download this image and now we can create an AVD, um, which is what you're going to have to do to test any of this stuff. So we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so the image is pretty small, so that's good. So now that we have that, we can then, uh, I might have to actually open up one of my projects for, you know, no reason. So I'll probably do like Hello World or something, uh, unless I can switch to manage. Okay, here we go, manage AVDs. So we'll start it, we'll open a new one. We'll name this one Android Wear uh, Round. Let's do a round one for this tutorial. So we want to do this Android Wear round that gives us the specific 320 by 320 um, pixels. We're going to change this to 4.4.2 API level 19. And look, it already detects the right CPU. Um, then for this, leave the hardware keyboard present. Uh, on the actual devices, it's going to be no keyboard, no virtual keyboard. Everything is going to be voice input. But for you to test out the devices and your apps and everything like that, instead of doing voice input, um, you just type it on your keyboard. Okay. So then um, since we're doing round, we're going to put in a, a round scan, leave everything else to fall. I checked the host GPU just to give a little bit more of a, um, you know, reasonable uh, response. So then we launch it. And here we go. And it might take a while because, like I said, it's not um, Intel-based. It's ARM. So it might take a little bit to be fully up. OK. And while that's booting, I'm going to hook up my phone to the computer. You have to enable um, USB debugging on your phone. So if you don't know how to do that, you're going to need to go into your settings. Yeah, so I allow. Go into your settings. Scroll down to about phone. Scroll down to build number and tap that um, a bunch of times until it says, OK, development mode uh, enabled. Then go into your developer options and then check the box that says Android debugging. This will not work without you doing that. So once you do that, then OK, good. Now we're booted. Now you can see there's no device connected right now. That's why there's there's this. Um, you have to actually go. 
Uh, I'm going to open up one of the projects in uh, Android Studio. Doesn't really matter which one. Um, or, uh, or actually, you just need a terminal. You need to be able to open uh, the ADB bridge. So need to navigate actually to the SDK. Um, it doesn't matter which SDK because this is going to be in. Um, so I can navigate here. So just give me a second. Platform tools. Properties. Okay, so then we need to do ADB. Um, there's a special connection that once you load up the app, okay, you, it, it'll say um, you have to go into settings on the app and then um, enable the notification access for it. So once you have that up, um, it'll just say connecting, connecting, connecting until you actually type in. Um, you have to connect to the emulator. So that's going to be, hang on, let me give you the exact command. And then it's adb dash d forward tcp uh, col um, sorry, colon. 5601 TCP ah, 5601. So you repeat that 5601 twice. Boom. Then see now all my my notifications are showing up in the in the wearable. And this is pretty cool because I mean you can't really see this, but when I click on something and drag it up and then click here, open. When I tap open, it actually loads up on the phone, which is kind of cool because that's kind of short, sort of how it's going to end up working. Now, none of this is actually specific to um, the wearables app. This seems to work with just any notifications that you um, already have. So I don't know if you saw, I already had, um, uh, I had um, Woots on here alerting me that there's new items in Woot. I can open that. And Okay, so yeah, those are my only two notifications or 10 Gmail messages and uh, one, or well, technically I guess three Woot messages. So that's kind of cool how it automatically just works out of the box like that without you having to actually make an app. Uh, but once you get uh, the, 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 the jar you can start developing uh, apps specifically for um, Android Wear. Now, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of a crappy skin. Um, this is supposed to be all fit into this round circle that you can't really see. Um, for me, I'm just gonna you know, leave it as a square because this would drive me crazy to see this black area here that's a square inside of a circle. I don't know if it's the toddler in me that you know says, that's not supposed to fit that way, but you know, you know, this is a preview. It's it's a first um, first release. So, uh, hope you found this tutorial helpful, and uh, you know, let me know what you think. All right, have a good day.